Hey Google, what's the latest update? Google made a big announcement at their keynote last week and I just wanted to break down their overall conversation around what they're gonna do. It's kind of crazy. We're gonna break it down into a few different categories, but first of all, we're gonna start with Google Bard. So Google Bard ended up first making a big announcement that it was going to have code generation finally. With Palm 2, Bard's math, logic, and reasoning skills made a huge leap forward, underpinning its ability to help developers with programming. Bard can now collaborate on tasks like code generation, debugging, and explaining code snippets. Bard has already learned more than 20 programming languages. So this is something that ChatGPT has had on Google at the start of things. It's funny, I heard a quote the other week where somebody said, anytime we make a complaint about AI, it feels like the fix is here within two to four weeks. And this is an example. I believe I made a comment about this in a previous video, which is now just wrong. But yeah, so it's gonna allow code generation now. I'm very excited to see how people are able to utilize Google Bard for this. And coders, don't get too nervous. Another really cool feature is that with Google Bard, there's going to be a export in docs feature. When they announced this in the keynote, I thought it was really cool as well as drafted it in emails. And speaking of exporting things, People often ask Bard for a head start drafting emails and documents. So today, we are launching two more export actions, making it easy to move Bard's responses right into Gmail and Docs. So if you're telling Google Bard that you wanna write an email, what better functionality than being able to click it and it go to your Gmail. I mean, most people use Gmail, so this is gonna be very convenient for the average user. Another big thing is that they did showcase some examples of putting images into Google Bard and then having Google Bard write something funny about this, these two dogs. So if you're looking to have some fun with your fur babies, you might upload an image and ask Bard to write a funny caption about these two. It lends a text that this is a photo of a goofy German Shepherd and a golden retriever and then Bard uses that to create some funny captions. And what I thought was really cool was just conceptualizing it in my head that now we're able to take images and introduce it to these large language models and they're able to understand the context of the pictures. It's a little scary, it's a little scary, but it's, it's cool nonetheless. So hopefully you guys can find some cool use cases for that. There are also some other small things. You're gonna have the ability to see Google Maps implemented into Bard. Okay, great, that's a good list of schools. Now to see where these are, I might now say, show these on a map. Here Bard's gonna use Google Maps to visualize where the schools are. And overall, just every little thing that you could have imagined that was maybe on the plate for Google from a baseline improvement with Bard, they covered you know most of them. So uh, kudos to them for getting started with this. Now next, what I noticed when I was at work the other day was I was working in Google Sheets and there was a bit of a suggestion for fixing uh, extra spaces between some text in a Google Sheet. And it kind of showcases the fact that Google is starting to introduce their AI uh, with this little symbol right here into all their different workspace options. You can see they have an example of you know a, a job description. It's in this Google Sheet and they're sort of implementing their generative AI into their different tools in their workspace, which is really exciting. They did announce that they were gonna put this into things like presentations and your Gmail. So I'm getting nerdy about this. It's, it's crazy to me that this is a thing. I mean, before Bing AI was implemented into the whole Edge browser, but now if you're using the Google Suite for work, I mean, it's gonna get very fun to work on stuff and get suggestions now. Some notes about this whole new Google Duet thing though which is sort of what they're calling this integrated AI system is that initially you're gonna have to sign up for a wait list. So I just wanted to point that out and you'll get notified as soon as it opens up to more generative AI features to more users and regions in the upcoming weeks. And then I did see something interesting on Engadget I wanted to point out, which was, and this also came up in the keynote as well, Google searches generative experience preview is gonna be kind of similar to what you see in Google results, but a little bit different. So when searching for something like a Bluetooth speaker, for example, you see that when choosing a Bluetooth speaker for a pool party, you can consider factors like, and then it gives you some example factors that you may sh maybe should consider, which is different, right? Like you're, you're Googling something and now to go along with it, you're getting some baseline information of how you should be looking at it. So it is similar to what ChatGPT does when someone's, you know, Googling or 
doing that instead of Google searching now. So this is a nice way to compete against what ChatGPT has turned in for a lot of people, which is Google. It's giving a baseline opinion of how you should be looking at it while also giving you search results. Now I work in Google ads and what else is interesting about this is that, you know, with this generative AI stuff, I do wonder whether they're gonna let us have some better improved responsive search ads creation and overall just how it's gonna affect the search landing page results overall. I mean, now we got Google fully announcing all their different AI things that they wanna bring to market and competing with Bing. I would really recommend you go and check out the Google Keynote. It was so interesting to see all the different applications for generative AI in the Google workspace. I'm definitely gonna be using Google Sheets. It's their competitor to Copilot. I've been using Google Workspace for a while, so this gets me excited as a business owner. Honestly, covering productivity apps leading up to this year had been pretty exciting, but with the implementation of all these AI tools, I have so much fun stuff to dive into, and I hope you really enjoy this AI revolution we're heading into from a nerding out standpoint, because I definitely am. And I hope you nerd out about videos like this one on how to improve your productivity even more.